Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Racing Breaks uh, Glorious Goodwood Preview. I'm Bashi. I'm joined by our brand ambassador, Ruby Welsh. Ruby, how are you doing? I'm very good, Bash. I'm very good. Yeah, the sun has eventually started to shine in Ireland this summer. So I think yesterday and today may well have been the first days of summer in Ireland. Um, so yeah, all is good. It's amazing what a bit of good weather can do for you. The humour just fucking changes. Excuse my language. It just changes everything, doesn't it? <laughs> Sun's out. Ruby is out. And we're also joined by top new market flat trainer, Charlie Fellows. Charlie, how are we doing, my man? Yeah, good. I'd like. I'd probably echo uh, Ruby's words. I had a nice day in the garden, little barbecue. And it's amazing what a bit of sunshine does to everyone's mood, doesn't it? So, yeah, all good. Looking it's forward true. to a good week racing. For sure. Well, the sun improves someone's mood, but also some winners. So let's try and find some winners. We're going to just go through the group races quickly for Goodwood. Uh, and we will kick things off on day one, the 225. It's the HKJC World Pool Vintage Stakes. It's a group two over seven furlongs. One last year by Hartem. That's a tricky race for punters. Two year olds with not a lot of form. Charlie, is there any anything here that stands out to you? Uh, do you know it is a, it is a it's a it's a good race. This it's very 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 open. Aiden's got the favourite, um, who looks like a decent horse, but I'm not convinced he's. I I just I, I'd be willing to give. Um, Archie Watson's horse at, at another go, Electrolyte. He was second in the in the Coventry. Uh, he, I think he's a pretty nice horse. He cost a lot of money at the sales. I think he'll suit the sharp nature of Goodwood. He'll he'll be well well drilled. I expect him to go forward. Um, and I just think he brings some very solid form. I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened last time at, at Newmarket, but oh, he he produces his um. He produces his second in the Coventry and he's got to have a big chance. For sure. And you're looking at seven to one. So a nice each way poke in this race. Ruby, do you think it'll go back to uh, Ireland with the Parthenon? He had, definitely has his chance. He improved a good bit from his run as a Cora behind Arizona Blaze back in May, which was at the Guineas meeting. Um, Camille Passaro was second. The party on had proved he was first time up in that race and he improved a good bit from it to win at Goran Park. Now, Goran is not Goodwood, but it is right handed up a hill, down a hill, round the bend. It's nowhere near the undulations and the the, 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 the trickery of Goodwood, but it, it's not a straightforward track either. So he has gone and won at Goran Park, which would be a plus. But I, I'd agree with Charlie, he has to have improved again from that. If he's going to get to the level that Electrolyte raced at a Royal Ascot behind Rashabar, that is the single strongest piece of form in the race. But look, the Partion is open to an improvement and you have to forgive Electrolyte the blowout at Newmarket behind Whistlejacket. Sure. Well, we're going from a race with not a lot of uh, collateral form. We're moving on to the three o'clock, the Whirlpool Lennox Stakes. Uh, we've got Kinross, won it last year, he finds himself at the top of the market. Ruby, do you, do you think he should be favourite for this? No, I don't. Um, I, I don't. I don't. He's had a couple of starts this season at uh, Newcastle and Newmarket, and was well beaten by Millstream in the July Cup. I ran okay at Newcastle, and he's got his comeback run. Obviously, you've got English Oak in there. I mean, that was a brilliant job. Um, that they did at Ascot in English for English Oak when he won the seven furlong the Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Um. They, they ran Make Me King. They dragged all the speed up that side of the track, and English Oak was it was a good winner. But they properly teed the race up for him. Um, and I would like to think if he did the same for Noble Dynasty or Tiber Floor, Tiber Flow, that you would have got the same results. So um, yeah, I, I'm going to chance Tiber Flow purely on a price point of view. Um, I thought he bounced back from a heavy fall at York behind Millstream to beat Serona at Haydock over seven furlongs. And yeah, I just like his mentality, Tiber Flow. And I'd be with him. Sure. What, how do you see this uh, unfolding, Charlie? I think this is a, it's a it's a belter of a race. Um, the ground, I think, one thing we haven't spoken about yet. The ground's going to be fascinating. Uh, it's officially good to soft at the moment. They had nine mil of rain last Thursday, dry through till Tuesday. So you would have thought, you would have thought by Tuesday it's going to be beautiful, good ground, and then probably getting quick sided good for the rest of the week. Although there's a possibility of rain forecast Wednesday night. Um, it should be perfect ground for all these horses. Kinross, we know, likes a bit of cut. The, the July Cup was a really funny race. I don't think they went very quick that day. And Kinross, obviously, he wants every yard of six furlongs. He was held up off a slow pace. 
and I don't think the race set up for him at all. He's like his record in this race is phenomenal. Should he be favourite? He's probably a bit short at five to two, sure. but I'd I'd have a good bet that he'd be thereabouts. Um, and English show couldn't have been more impressive than the Buckingham Palace, but as you say, it did set up very nicely for him that day. He's going from a handicap into a proper group two. Big step up. Look, he could be very, very, very good, but I'd be I'd be looking at one of the more proven ones like Noble Dynasty or Kinross for me. Yeah. Noble Dynasty, the one that sticks out for me. Uh I think we might all be in, in agreement in the next race we're gonna be looking at, which is the Al Shakab uh, Goodwood Cup stakes. Uh, and I think this could be a penalty kick for Kiprios. Obviously, the uh, Gold Cup winner at Ascot. Is this a penalty kick for him, Charlie? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, can't really say anything else other than that. <laughs> yeah, he should he should um, hose up. Uh, I think the uh, trying to find something to follow him in is not easy. Trushan amazingly bounced back to form last time. Yeah. I just worry that by Tuesday, the ground is possibly going to be getting a little bit quick for him. He wants it really, really soft. Sweet William ran well in the Gold Cup, got had no chance from way too far mm-hmm. back. I think I'd probably be backing him each way would be my would be my um my pick in that race. Sure. Is there any other outcome you can see apart from a Kiprios win here, Ruby? No, and even when you listen to Ryan Moore after the Gold Cup and how he played the race out, he was fully convinced he was riding the fastest horse. So even dropping down a half a mile in trip is going to make no difference to, to Kiprios. So, um, yeah, Kiprios will win. And I'd probably go about it a different way. i do the straight forecast with Sweet William rather than backing him each way. There you go, there you go. A wise punting man is our Ruby. Uh, but <laughs> we will move on to... <laughs> To day number two. Yeah, until until Sweet William goes and beats Kiprios. That's and then true, Charlie that's has, true. Charlie has his ass covered and Ruby's getting nothing. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Dave, you move on to day two, the 225. It's the Visit Qatar, Oak Tree Stakes, Phillies and Mares, Group 3 over seven furlongs. Jabara heads the market here. You're looking about three to one. I will just mention we're filming this on Sunday evening. So at the moment, uh, Jabara's three to one anti-post favourite. was second to Porter. We'll tune it in the Falmouth last time. Does she get her her head in front here, Charlie? Um, she's got the best form on offer by a country mile, by a country mile. Pat Mandu obviously ran very well over in France, but I think Jabara that was a good run at Newmarket last time. You've got Breeze in there as third favourite, and without any sort of disrespect to Breeze, she's not good enough. I don't think to be winning a race like this. Um, Fair Angelica's okay. But it's got to step up big time. You know, Jabara was a very, very good second to, I think, a very underrated filly. Uh, and to me, if she turns up, then she will be hard to beat. OK. Ruby, are you in agreement or uh, anything? Yeah, and the, the right two at the top of the market. Um, Kathmandu, when you go back to her run in the French 1000, which is the Pouli de Pouch, is it? Yeah, Pouliche. Pouliche. Um yeah, that gives her a chance with a poor run in Deauville since we kind of put you off, Kathmandu. And I'd agree with Charlie. Breeze's run, I'd ask up behind running line and you see where running line finished then behind Jabara and Porta Fortuna at Newmarket probably tells you the strength of that of that Ascot race. So yeah, Jabara is the most likely winner. The one that could bounce back to form at a bit of a price anti-post were it to run would be Jumbly. Um, I don't think she's been getting her ground in Ireland. She'd handle the sound of surface, but she's just an each way poke for look for the sake of looking for something outside the top of the market. Sure. Well, you're getting 14 to 1 Jumbly at the moment. Uh, but the next race, we will look at the three o'clock, the Malcolm Stakes, Group 3, five furlongs. Now, when you're looking at collateral form, Asterius heads the market. Um, the only time he's beaten was at Royal Ascot behind Whistlejacket, who's since come out and bolted up at the July course. Um, worthy, uh, worthy favorite, do you think, Ruby? It does, yeah. And Arizona Blaze came back to the curl and ran really well as well. So, that uh, two year race, which was the uh, Norfolk, is holding up, is holding up really well. So, yeah, I can see why Asterius is your favorite outside of Asterius. I think Vinegard, Vingard, actually, not Vinegard, Vinegard, Vingard, um, ran well at Newbury after running behind Ain't Nobody on the first day of Ascot in the Windsor Castle. That was. Charlie's probably a better handle of two-year-old form than me. That was probably the weakest two-year-old race at Ascot, the Windsor Castle, Charlie, was it? Mm, yeah. 
It was, and it's not, Definitely. yeah, it, it's not holding up. So that will put me off in guard. But there has to be something against uh, the favorite. But I, without Dex, I'm not sure what it is yet, Char, uh, Bashi. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, Charlie, have you got a strong, strong opinion on this race? Well, I th- think it's actually a very open race. Um, Asterius, obviously, uh, he won last time at Sandown. But the, I'm not quite sure how good that race was. The filly that he beat that day went off favourite for the um, the race at Newbury. What's it called? The, um, the five furlong race, the sales race. Spring Cup. No, um, no, no, no. The um, uh, the race, the, the Richard Hannon benefit race. What is it that he wins every sodding year? Trophy, um, something trophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two year old, the, is it? No, not the two year old trophy. What is the race called? Hold on, let me have a look. <laughs> uh, I even had a runner in the race and I can't remember what it's called. Who was your runner? Uh, okay. Sir. Palamedes, the uh, super sprint, the super, uh, sprint. super sprint. So the second went off favourite for the super sprint, carrying absolutely no weight, and she ran, she ran very averagely. So the form hasn't exactly been held up, although he did win it very impressively. I just wonder if you can look elsewhere here and maybe take on something slightly unexposed. Possibly the Simon and Ed Crisford horse soldier's heart cost a lot of money by Havana Gray, who who has been. The most remarkable story is a stallion. Um, he was a 425 grand yearling, proper pedigree, won very impressively last time out. Just, I mean, there's a lot of question marks, but I just, I, I think at five to two, I'd be taking that favourite on. Thank you, Doki. All right. Well, the next race we'll look at, from in my point of view, is the race of the week. It's the Sussex Stakes. We've obviously got uh, the Irish. Uh, Guinea's winner, you've got the St. James Palace winner, Rosalian, taking on Henry uh, Longfellow, pushed him all the way at Royal Ascot. You've got notable speech and obviously the English 2000 Guinea's winner. Um, cracking race. Does anyone have a real strong opinion? Actually, Charlie, what I wanted to ask you on this one, because I, I remember you saying you went skiing with Richard Hannon uh, and he would not shut up about Rosalian the whole time. He, he, he yeah, absolutely shut up loved anyway. it. <laughs> he absolutely <laughs> loves this horse, doesn't he? Can, can you see him being beaten? He's he's ten to eleven anti post market. Can you see him being beaten at all? Uh, I actually can't. I actually can't this time. I, I I've sort of always been. I, I thought he was possibly running over a bit too far. I thought in the I thought in the race at um, Newmarket, the Guineas, he looked to me like a non stayer, and so. Uh, I've always been a little bit of a doubter over the trip, especially as he by Blue Point. But then, he, obviously, he won. He won nicely at um, in Ireland, and then he obviously went and won the St James's Palace as well, where he had a beautiful trip round. Everything went wrong for the Godolphin horse that won the Guineas. Rosalian had the perfect trip, lovely inside. Posy switched off beautifully, got the splits, went and won nicely. Um. I think Goodwood will suit this horse down to the ground. I think the sharper mile, he's got so much natural speed. Um, Hannon, as Ruby very rightly pointed out, Hannon never shuts up. But on this horse, he was even more vocal. And he genuinely says this is the best he's ever had. So if he's the best he's ever had, then I'm pretty happy to go with that. And I don't think he's done much to dispel that so far. Okay. Ruby, any chance of it going back to Ireland with Henry Longfellow? No, I, I agree with Charlie, but slightly disagree on the take of the Ascot race. Um, I think Rosalian's after winning a pair of group ones without ever getting the run of the race. I think Hatem got the run of the Irish Guineas, and I think Henry Longfellow got the run of the St. James's Palace. I thought Rosalian had to really show his class off mm-hmm. a steadily run place, and Henry got first run on him uh, to go and chase him down and go and beat him. I thought Sean Levy gave him a brilliant ride at Ascot. Um, but I think I love horses that win when things aren't going sure perfectly for him. And this fella is after managing to win the last twice without it ever going perfect. And I think when he does get the run of the race, he'll blow these away. Um yeah, I, I think I think he's managed to win the last twice without getting the rub of the green. I think he's the best horse by mm. a good bit. And Charlie, I just want to ask you, if notable speech came out and turned around the form again, do we all just look a little bit stupid? Like how did you um see his race at Royal Ascot? Uh, no, no, I, I, 
I was one of the, I was, the, I, as soon as the race was finished, there's like everything that could have gone wrong went wrong for that horse that, that day. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely 100% put a line through it. He was stuck out the back of a slow pace. He was wide out the back. He was keen. It was a disaster. But there was so much went wrong. You can absolutely put a line through it. So I personally would not be counting out him bouncing back um, sure. at all. I just have a feeling this track will suit Rosalian better. Um, but no, I just put a line through Ascot for notable speech. It was a disaster. Everything <laughs> that could have gone wrong went wrong that day. And that was not his running and not his fault. Okie dokie. Okay, so that is the uh, the Wednesday um, tied off. So let's look at day three, the Thursday, the 225 Markle Richmond Stakes, a group two over six furlongs. Now we've got a short price favourite, the striking Viking, great name, bolted up at York, uh, was beaten by Henry Matisse in the group two gain at railway stakes at the Curra. Ruby, were you there that day by any chance? I was, and... I was working with Gary O'Brien, who made a very strong case for Henry Matisse uh, before the off, even though Ryan was riding Tunbridge Wells. Right? Yeah. Gary was making a really strong case for Henry Matisse, and he was really impressed with Henry Matisse and his debut. Striking Viking had no no excuse. He just ran into a real good two-year-old of Aidens. He's probably the right favourite. Would I like to be on him at five to four? Absolutely not. And the one I do like at a price is Black Forza of Michael O'Callaghan's. He's round about 12, 12 to one. Yeah. He beat Rudy Zappel um, in a maiden at Fairy House. Rudy Zappel went to Ascot and ran really well. Has since come back to the Curra and won a nursery off top weight. Uh, Snapdragon has run consistently, who was the fourth horse and the fifth horse, a horse called Whiskey and Beer who runs Monday night in Galway in the two-year-old maiden. So Fairy House, you wouldn't traditionally associate with, with real good two-year-old maidens, but this might have been an above-average race there. Michael O'Callaghan has had success at Goodwood in the past, and I think at around about 12 to 1, Black Forza is probably overpriced. Thank you, Doki. You can actually get 14s uh, in place. Shop really. around. Shop around. You've got to be smart. Charlie, a tricky race to get a, a grip on form. Is there anything that stands out to you here? Yeah, interesting. Interesting. I'm I'm actually gonna gonna flag up a one a D surprise as well. Uh, King of Bears. Um, he had a very 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 big. I ran. I had a nice horse of mine called Haziz, who um went on to be second to Electrolyte, who then was second in the in the um in the Coventry, and on debut, uh, I ran him at Newbury in quite a hot maiden, and. Um, there was a very, very big word for this horse that day. He got well backed and actually he ended up disappointing. I don't know for what reason, but he then had quite a bit of time off. He didn't reappear very quickly and he came back to Newbury and he won pretty impressively on his second start. Um, I thought that was a good run. I think um, Paul and Ollie Cole's two-year-olds have been flying this year and he's got some properly nice two-year-olds. And I know they think quite a lot of this horse. So I think he's very interesting. He's got two runs under his belt. So he's not just in there, but off the back of one win. And um, with Hector Kraft on board, I think he's got a very good jockey. So I'm I'm interested by him. I actually trained the striking Vikings half-brother, mm -hmm. um, who was a very good horse. We actually sold him to go to Australia. Um, and I did hear that this fellow was a particularly good-looking horse with the breeze-ups. Um, someone told me that they thought he was lovely. They didn't buy him. More for them. Um, but um, yeah, I think I'd be taking him on, and I think King of Bears at price is very interesting. Okay, so we've got a certainty reverse forecast: Black Forza and King of Bears. <laughs> we're, we're all going home with lots of money in our pocket. Uh, we will move on to the three o'clock. The Gordon Stakes, a Group Three over a mile and four. We've got another uh, short price favourite at the moment: Jan Brugel, six to four. I thought he looked like he was going to get beat last time out, but really put his head down, got up. And uh, I think the extra two furlongs will suit here, Ruby. How do you see it? Absolutely. Uh, I thought he did really well to win over 10 furlongs with the Curra. The third, the Curial Seeker is a fairish horse and trust your instinct. And um, that was second, was coming off the back back of a good win at Gorham Park before that. But I thought Jan Brugel did well to win at 10. Um, yeah, this is a group three. I'd be surprised if he's not a bit better in the group three horse. And mm. I think going to a mile and a half would really suit him. Charlie, how do you see this one playing out? Yeah, I I tend to agree. Um, on pedigree, he's is he Galileo out of a 
Dane Hill dancer mare, so he's bred to stay very nicely. And you've got to think that the extra two furlongs is only going to be a good thing for him. Um, in behind, there's not much that catches my eye either, really, to take him on. Sadati Sadati is a decent horse, ran a good race in the Derby, finished fifth. He's since been sold. Another nice horse leaving these shores off to Australia, probably at the end of the year. Um, yeah, he ran a good race in the Derby. Um, Derby forms yet to be really tested by the ones behind. So this would be interesting to see how he runs because I think there's a few people who have a bit of a sneaking suspicion that that derby wasn't the strongest derby in the world. Mm. Um, I'm in agreement with that. Sorry. So I'm in agreement with that. I think it was a weak, a weak derby. Yeah. Um, and City City Troy is not the superstar we thought he was. I don't think Ambiente Friendly finds much off the bridle. Like yeah. tricky one. But anyway, we are digressing. We are digressing. We are digressing. So. Uh, we let's move on to the next. Yeah, sorry, Charlie, before you go, Bashi, obviously yep. the French horse, if it comes, would be of interest because, to be fair to Mr. Graffard, he is making some impression with what he brings to the UK. And if he brings yeah. Shamrock Hand, you'd have to kind of take note. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For agree. Sure. It's one of George winner at the weekend. Yeah, flying. Couldn't agree more. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so the Nassau Stakes. Now, this is something I wanted to ask you about here, Charlie. So, opera singer. I was all over at Royal Ascot. Six to four for the coronation stakes a few days before. Went off seven to two. Now, as a trainer, if you was to see that happen to your horse, is is it red flags? Is is would there normally be a reason behind a drift like that? And then, you know, Opera Singer still ran well with credit, but I don't think we saw the proper proper Opera Singer that day. Like, how how did you see the race? Funny, it's funny when I, when I have a horse that drifts and I and I fancy it, I I absolutely hate it. It, it yeah. just it gets in here, and you're like, I genuinely think this horse has a proper chance. Why is it drifting like a barge? Why yeah. does no one agree with me? And then in the same way, you'll have horses that you'll send to the races, and you'll think yeah, it's just a horse. Yeah, we'll be lucky to get a place, and it gets backed heavily, and you're like, what is going on? And the funny thing is that nine times out of ten, it, the market gets it right. Like it, yeah. And I don't know how they know it's in Broadway, but yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, good race, isn't it? Really, yeah, really, nice. really, really good race. This um, and not an easy one. They've obviously they've supplemented Emily up, John, which is a fascinating call especially as they had Inspiral in there already. It just suggests that maybe they're just a little bit of concern. Inspiral's disappointed twice this year. Definitely didn't stay. They went a proper gallop last time when she ran, what was it, Prince of Wales? Did she, did she run in? What was yep. it? Yeah. Uh, they made it a proper gallop and she didn't get home. Um, and she's just got a few question marks now. Maybe the sharper Goodwood track will suit her a bit better. Opera Singer is obviously a very nice filly. Emily Up John, she's run really well this year, but again, she's just not quite flying. Although that run behind Blue Stocking doesn't look so bad now after she ran a cracker in the King George on Saturday. So it's a really good race. I think I would be going with. Boringly, opera singer. I think she's the best filly in the race. I just think those two older fillies of the Gosdens just aren't quite on top of their game this season. Sure. And Ruby, if my memory serves me correctly, I'm sure you had you were very sweet on opera singer as well for Royal Ascot. Are you are you going for revenge? Are you, do you think? Oh, she... I'm, on, I'm one of those mugs that when she got the seven to two, I went in again. Um, uh... That's how much I fancied her at Ascot, and I actually think she didn't go fast enough. Mm. I think she didn't really test Porta Fortuna's stamina. Yeah. And I think the 10 furlongs that Goodwood is made for, um, I, she ended up, I couldn't believe that content didn't make it in the in the coronation. Content dropped in last. I was full sure she would jump and go and drag Opera Singer. She didn't. And it left Opera Singer sitting upsides in front. They didn't go fast enough. And I think over 10 furlongs, you'll see the real Opera Singer. I think 13 to 8 at the moment, which I think could look huge. If she runs like we know she can. Um, but anyway, we will move on to day number four, the penultimate day, the Friday. Just the one race we're going to look at, which is the 335, the King George Qatar Stakes, a group two over five furlongs. 
It's another cracking race here. You've got lots of uh, Royal Ascot sort of second leg again. You've got Aspora at the top of the market with Big Ebbs. Believing's in there at six to one as well. Jazor's eight. It's a fascinating race. Charlie, how do you see this one playing out? It, it, it is. This is almost, I think, the race of the week. It is a very, 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 very good race. Big Ebbs uh, will love this track. Obviously, he won over course and distance last year. We know he handles it. Um, he ran a very good race behind Asfora. Asfora then reopposes. This is a very different test for her. Mm. Very different. Now, she is quick, really, really quick. But what's she going to think about going downhill? That would be the only slight question mark I have over her. The ground, uh, another small issue. If the rain comes Wednesday, she does not want soft ground. She wants some decent, quick ground. I think it's going to be lovely, but just keep an eye on the forecast if you're thinking of backing her. Believing is an absolute star. Never runs a bad race. I thought when they sent her over to Hong Kong, they were absolutely mad. She ran no race, and I thought that would almost finish a filly like her and she's come back almost better than ever she won really nicely over at the Curra, uh recently she's a filly that thrives off her racing they've supplemented Jassor which is a fascinating call so they they obviously there's got to be a lot of confidence behind um, him and then you've still got you're, you're not even taking into account living the dream who won the none thought we know how quick he is if he gets loose on the front end he could be very 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 hard to pull back and Pontos, who's the Czech horse, is actually staying in my yard, is also electric out the gates. They could go a million miles an hour here. They could go <laughs> absolutely flat out. I've basically I've highlighted every single horse in the race. I haven't held <laughs> anyone there at all. I think if the ground is decent, I would be going with Asfora. I think she was, I think she did really well to win that race at Royal Ascot. Um, and I think on decent ground, she'll be really hard to turn around the form. Okay. Aspora confirming the form with Big Evs and believing. Ruby, how do you see this one? I was kind of bouncing the balls a little bit, but after listening to Charlie, it has pushed me in a direction, and I'm going to go for one that will be sitting behind Living the Dream, Pontos, and whatever else wants to try and break the track record, and I'm going to go for Starlust. I don't think Starlust stayed behind in this year in the Commonwealth Cup, and he decided that Starlust was one over five furlongs at York. I think you need to be really quick to win at York. Um, it's not a track I ever rode on. Would you watch races there? If you can't travel at 42, 43 miles an hour in a five furlong race, you're not going to get involved in York. That That's the speed you have to have where you're clocking those fractions at Ascot, you're not going to get home. Um, I think Goodwood is similar, not similar, but you need that speed at Ascot. And I think Stardust has the capability to go that fast as they're travelling. So I will go with Stardust to be running over the top later on. Okay, okay. Believing is the one that I like. Uh, I was only beating it at um, one and a half lengths at Royal Ascot. Now I get £5 better off with Asphora and £3 better off with Big Ev. Six to one each way, bet to nothing. Uh, but let's look at our last race. It is the three o'clock Qatar Lily Lantry Stakes. Um, a wide open race at the moment because we're recording this on Sunday. It's hard to know um, who's going to turn up here. Can I just make sorry? What did you just say about the weights there? Because I think you've got that slightly wrong. So, so I'm sure believing is now five pound better off. With two Asfora. pound better off. Two pound better off. And she, what about, to, she has to carry a three pound penalty for winning over in Ireland. What about Big Ed? Uh okay, interesting. I'm just... uh, Big Ed's were big. She, it, uh, let me just check. Nine six. What did they carry it? Let's get. As for a nine one, and he was nine four, so he carried three pounds less at Asker, and he's now carrying five pounds less. So he's two pounds better off. They're both two pounds better off. But it's just an interesting angle. Yep. Listen, I might have upsold the weight, but when she wins by <laughs> length, it, it it might have been you know you could uh. Could have run off, run her off levels, but the Lily Langtry three wins the seven to two favorite. The, uh, this is a wide open race. I'll take my hat off if anyone's got a strong, a strong opinion in this one at the moment. Ruby, I'll start with you here. I actually do have a strong opinion. I really like David Manissier's mayor, Keys Corister, um, mm -hmm. who was way too keen in the Gold Cup. Uh, 
pulled the arms out of Benoit de la Sayette, gave herself absolutely no chance, ran a cracker at Sandown in early May in the race that is the Henry the third, is it? The eighth. Henry the something stakes anyway. Um, but Keys Chorister, I do like her, ran really well at Ascot behind Coltrane as well. I think she bangs Henry on the door second. most of us. Second. Jesus, every number bar the one I needed. Um, <laughs> But Keys Carister, I, I do like her and I like Dave Manessia as a trainer as well. So I am siding with her. Interesting. Right about the 11 to 2 mark at the moment. So it could be an each way prospect. Charlie, any any strong fancies here? Oh, bu- 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 um, no, I, pro- I actually probably have to, having listened to Ruby's very convincing argument, I probably have to agree with him. She's, she's a very good filly. As you say, she was beaten ahead or whatever it was in the race at Sandown, she gave, had no chance in the Gold Cup. Um, the Dr. Mark 6 shouldn't be a problem because she was still quite keen in her races at Sandown, so she's clearly got she's got plenty of... She's not, she's not slow. She's not slow. Mm. Um, and Free Wind, she's a good filly. Uh, she ran... Obviously, she ran okay at York. Blue Stocking again has... But the form, I don't think Gosden's horses were in the best of form back then. So you could possibly mark her up for that. I think, I think, I think everyone would say John horses took a while to come to hand this year. Sure. And they seem to be in a lot better form uh at the moment. Um but yeah, no, I'd I'd be um I'd probably be um I, I'd be Kai's Chorister over free wind, I think. Winky dokey. Okay, well that's the last race we're gonna look at. So let's just um revisit the best bet of the week ruby i'll start with you who do you fancy who won't be beat who won't be beat at a nice uh, price or a nice a nice price not to me i don't beat at a nice price i don't think rosalian will be beaten i don't think jan brugel will be beaten i think opera singer will win um they'd be the three i would be sticking my neck out for anyway okay that's a nice enough treble there uh charlie what about yourself oh God, I'm the worst tipster in the world. What do I want to <laughs> do? Give us one um, of your own down the handicap somewhere outside of Goodwood. What about believing because she's getting five pound weight allowance off the others? But believing <laughs> if, if she's if believing's getting five pound weight allowance, then she's an absolute certainty. certainty. Yeah, I'd, certainty. I'd, I'd, I'd agree with you there. <laughs> um, if okay, well, outside of the group races, um, if I run a horse called Cody Lyon. On Thursday, uh, he'd have a really good chance. He won a very competitive handicap at Ascot last time out. Um, the form is very strong. The second has won. The fourth or fifth has won. Uh, and he did absolutely everything he could possibly do wrong that day and still won uh, and was valued for quite a lot more than he won by. Um I could run him over a mile. I could run him over seven on the Saturday, but he needs cut in the ground, which is why I'm saying he may not run. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on the weather, keeping an eye on what the what the jockeys say about the ground, hoping it doesn't dry out too much. But if he runs in one of those handicaps, I think he'll have a great chance. Okie dokie. There you go. And Ruby, I can't let you go without asking if there's any anything that sticks out to you at Galway. Fancy Zana here in the Galway plate. Uh, mm-hmm. Great woman and hurdler in these days. Look, he's crying out for a trip over fences. So, yeah, fancy him in the Galway plate. Um, and one of Tony Mullins is in a mile and a half handicap tomorrow night. Bashi called Kentucky Gal came home really well on the Johnny Velasquez at the Curra on Derby weekend. Steps up to a mile and a half at the Curra. I think she's nine or ten to one. I think she'll win. There you go. Some lovely prices here. Um, again, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Charlie and Ruby, thank you very much. Uh, I hope all of our customers that are going to be joining us at both Galway and Goodwood have a fantastic time. We've got limited availability left for the ARC and also the Breeders' Cup. So head over to racingbreaks.co.uk or call 0800 193 6646. But I hope you all have a lovely, a lovely week. Let's back some winners. Charlie, Ruby, thank you very much.